Welcome back to WWF No Mercy. Uh, episode 2 is we're continuing Kurt Angle's quest to become the Intercontinental Champion. Uh, when we last left off, uh, we had just beaten China. She thought that she was a, a better contender for the IC title than, than Kurt was. So we had to beat her in under three minutes, which we did. But uh, I don't think we're done with China quite yet. So we get to chapter three, escort. Yes, going to meet her boyfriend, uh, racial stereotype Eddie Guerrero. <clears throat> He's standing up for the honor of his lady. Now I'll say, um, Eddie was playing a racial stereotype. Uh, you can hear his theme music, Latino Heat, playing in the background. The only thing that saved the angle from being racist was um, the fact that he was... They, they made it clear that he doesn't always talk like that. He didn't always act like a racial stereotype. He was only doing it because China thought it was hot. So when she <clears throat> she told him that she could no longer, um, how does she put it? She could no longer resist his Latino heat. He suddenly started running around with his speedy Gonzalez accent and acting like a lunatic, which made him a bad person. Eddie was a was a villain. You know, they made it clear that he was a bad person for being such a racist, which is the only saving grace of what was an occasionally uncomfortable storyline. The uh, WWF didn't help matters by uh, letting the camera linger on homemade signs in the, in the crowd that said things like, uh, Eddie Guerrero mows my lawn and stuff like that. Oh, oh, we have a special guest. Well, it wouldn't it wouldn't be wrestling without outside interference. <clears throat> and sure enough, Chris Benoit, the the guy we were ostensibly chasing, the Intercontinental Champion, is here. As it looks like this this match was a trap, which makes sense. Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit were actually partners. Uh, at this point, they were both part of a team called the Radicals. So now I have to fight two people at once. This would normally be the partner wrestling match where the referee would be calling for the bell or he'd be chasing off the uh, intruder. But there is no referee <clears throat> in No Mercy. Unless you're, you're playing a special guest referee match, the referee is invisible. Which is to, uh, to save on character space because the graphic engine could only allow four characters at a time. Benoit, I guess, got bored. That's the way outside interference works. They come out and they attack you for about a minute, and then they just stand on the outside of the ring. Which will let us get back to beating up Eddie. Oh. Which uh, is a little more difficult than the matches we had against Jericho and China. Not as difficult as the one we're going to have after this, which is our first actual real challenge. I don't know, this one's actually proving a little more difficult than I thought it would. There you go, into the corner. Oh. Oh. Oof. It's a pump handle slam, if you're curious what that move is called. <clears throat> Alright, this is one of the old tried and true tricks in No Mercy. See, taunting is one of the fastest ways to raise your attitude meter. That posing that I'm doing. So, really one of the fastest ways to get caught up in this game is to knock your opponent outside the ring and then just taunt.
and work the knee. Uh, we haven't had a chance to, to really explore it yet, but No Mercy was one of the first games to actually use um, a damage system which accounted for where you were attacking your opponent. Uh, if I continue to attack Eddie's knees or his legs, he'll eventually start limping. Uh, if I if I attack his head a lot, he'll start he'll start walking around really slowly and holding his holding his head. Same with his arms or with his body. <laughs> it's a low blow accompanied by the silly bell, which always happens in this game with low blows. <clears throat> Uh, not really, not really trying to work a particular body part with Eddie. Just trying to set up that angle slam. This, uh, this match is now longer than our first two matches combined. Oops. Miscommunication. Oh, no. I'll say another reason, in addition to the... I know I said before that the reason everybody loves this game so much was the story mode, but the other thing was this, its actual fighting engine. This, this, to me, was the first wrestling game I really ever played. Well, um, this and, and the game that came before it in the series, WrestleMania 2000, was really the first one that felt... The matches felt like professional wrestling. This kind of feels the way that a professional wrestling match feels. It doesn't feel like just a, just a fighting game where people are in a wrestling ring. <clears throat> you know, the, the way that, that counters work, the way the match flows, particularly this system of building the momentum to get to your finishing move. You know, that's that's the way wrestling matches work. So hopefully that is enough to put Eddie down. Yes. So Benoit, you're trapped did not work. I should note that Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle feuded many times over their WWF careers. Uh, though in, in this storyline, Kurt Angle is the good guy. Chris Benoit is the bad guy. That's never the way it was in real life. So, $500 for our trouble. <clears throat> so we continue our winning ways. Chapter 4, Beat the Man to Be the Man. So here comes Benoit, an episode of SmackDown. Belt draped over his shoulder. No one ever actually wears the belt like a belt in this game. Everybody always has it draped over their shoulders. Probably due to graphical limitations of some kind. Benoit was never the best at, at cutting promos. This actually might be real Benoit dialogue. That's, that's our cue if I ever heard it. I'd say the, the great thing about Kurt Angle, um, about his character, the reason I loved it so much is it, it allowed the audience to do something that we as, we as Americans rarely get to do, which is really hate Olympic athletes. 
he's wearing the gold medal. He was legitimately a gold medalist. Um, if, if you didn't know, Kurt Angle won a gold medal at the 1996 Olympic Games. So they, they, for his for his wrestling character, um, they they took the way we sort of deify Olympic athletes in this country, and they took it to the next level, and they turned him into an Olympian who expects to be deified, and in fact preaches to everybody as though he's better than them, and superior to them in all ways. Which, of course, made him such a perfect villain. So now we have a non-title match against Chris Benoit. And this one is going to be... This one, I think, is going to be tougher than Eddie was. Which is another thing I like about the story mode. I mean, there is an, a sense of escalating difficulty uh, as you continue in the storylines. Doing pretty well. Well, we were doing pretty well. It's a nice dragon screw leg whip. Don't ask me how I know the names of all these wrestling moves. It just it's just come from years and years of watching. So, uh, what, uh, what to say about Chris Benoit? <sighs> I mean, it's I, no sense, you know, no sense beating around the bush, I guess, if you don't already know Chris Benoit's backstory. Um, Chris Benoit is dead. As was Eddie Guerrero. I don't think I mentioned that. Eddie Guerrero is actually dead now, too. He died from, uh, heart problems in 2006. 2005, probably caught, brought on by years of <clears throat> being really bad to his own body, drug use, that kind of stuff. Uh, Chris Benoit uh, did not go from heart problems. Uh, Chris Benoit committed suicide uh, shortly after murdering his family. Uh, this was uh, probably a combination of, of many things, M chief among them uh, brain damage from all of the concussions he suffered while he was a professional wrestler. So, you know, beating him up in these wrestling games is kind of creepy on some level. Which makes me... Uh, <laughs> Makes me wish maybe I we shouldn't have started with the Intercontinental title. Oh no! All set for my finisher and he reversed it. No matter. <clears throat> See if I can get it one more time. No, that was dumb. I think that's a northern light suplex? Yes. No, that's a dragon suplex. Sorry. Sorry, wrestling nerds. Okay, that was easier than the Eddie match. That's a surprise. Take a look at the suplex again. I want to say this was the first game to do this kind of instant replay stuff. At least wrestling game, anyway. WrestleMania 2000 might have done it, too. All right, so we've beaten, we beat Jericho, we beat China, we've beaten Eddie Guerrero, and now we've beaten Benoit himself in a non-title match. I think beating the champion in a non-title match should, should grant us a title match, but somehow I think Benoit is going to be a little more slippery than that. We have the champion's trap. Uh-oh. <clears throat> that is, uh, let's see, Farouk on the left, Bradshaw on the right. They are the APA, 
and then their gimmick, as you can see from uh, from what's happening here with Benoit, uh, they were th bodyguards, bodyguards, and just thugs for hire. It's weird seeing Bradshaw with long hair now. He's actually he has, he has short blonde hair. He's an announcer now. You can see how, how afraid of us uh, Benoit is. He's hiring the APA to beat us up. And of course, they're happy to do it. I don't want him to remember his mother. Who writes this dialogue? Yeah. Okay. Handicap match. So this means it's going to be the two of them against us at the same time. I'm going to skip the intro. Uh, no Mercy has a targeting system, as you can see. I'm going to do a little dope. Oh, see who comes at me first. So since there, since there are two guys, I can hit one of the uh, the yellow C buttons to switch between which guy I want to actually be looking at. Though the frustrating thing is that if the one I'm not looking at hits me, I will uh, ah, double T moves. I'll automatically switch focus, which can sometimes be frustrating because you'll you'll get up from especially with a double T move like that. You'll get up and you won't always know exactly who it is you're looking at. Uh, general strategy for a match like this is to pick a guy, just pick one, and beat him up. Just focus on the one. Oop, sorry. Just focus on that one, and just keep the other one away from you. Easier said than done, of course. Fortunately, this is one of those, uh, the story continues even if you lose matches, because this one, the AP are tough. Uh, Farouk, Farouk's real name is Ron Simmons. Uh, he came into the WWF in 1996. I'm not sure what that name is supposed to be. Uh, but he was uh, first came to prominence as the uh, as the leader of a. Or he he was he was doing some kind of Louis Farrakhan gimmick. He was the leader of a of a stable called the Nation of Domination, who were protesting the the years of racism by the the WWF that it kept. Uh, kept African Americans down and prevented them from winning championships and somehow protesting racism made them the bad guys which I never could quite follow I'm getting my ass kicked so after that Farouk and Bradshaw became the acolytes they were the Undertaker's brainwashed minions which lasted until The Undertaker went through a gimmick change and no longer needed brainwashed minions. What was that? Uh, which is when they, uh, they started the whole bodyguard thing. This is not working out so well for me. Well, what Bradshaw's doing there? Oh, another miscommunication. <sighs> Reversals.
Got a nice DDT from Bradshaw. He's getting pretty close to a finish. Farouk keeps climbing on the top rope. And I don't know why. He just broke up a pin attempt. Which, thanks. <laughs> Can't tell if Farouk is actually trying to help me or what. Ah, that's what I've been trying to do this whole match. Remember, that's the strategy I said three minutes ago. It has not been working out. slam from Farouk. Not sure how much more of this I can take. What Bradshaw is trying to do, he keeps... Ah, that. <laughs> he was trying to clothesline me. Say, every, every wrestler uh, will... Uh, I'll show you specifics when we... Uh, we do the we talk about the create a wrestler mode, which we'll be doing after I finish the Intercontinental title. Uh, when we we do the we'll be doing the light heavyweight championship next, and that's when I'm going to show off the uh, create a wrestler mode. But uh, every wrestler has moves that are marked as favorites, and whenever the computer is controlling them, that, those are the moves they'll do most often. And clearly, Bradshaw has a has that running clothesline listed as one of his favorite moves, which is why he keeps backing me into the ropes to try to do it. The problem is the other computer-controlled character, Farouk, doesn't know what the hell he's doing and keeps getting in the way. Yes! No, no way that's going to work. I got my finisher. Angle slam. And angle slam for Farouk. Let's try to pin Bradshaw. One. Not even close. Get up. Hurry, hurry, get up. I think I got it in time. I did. Come on, Angle. Alright, I, I fought my way back from the brink. Alright, well, my, my idea was to beat up Farouk, but I've hit two finishers on Bradshaw, so... We're gonna... He, he's, our, he's our guy now. No. See, that was a Samoan drop from uh, Bradshaw. Farouk out of here. That's the problem with that. The, the strategy is that you throw one guy out, and you turn around to attack the other guy, and he's already on top of you. It's a risky strategy. Let's get Farouk out of here. Back to the Irish whip and this clothesline again, but no. They keep getting in each other's way. I'm dumped to the outside. I'll eventually get up. Do not want to fight these guys on the outside. Oh, and they got weapons. 
guess this is a no disqualification match. I didn't pay that close attention to the rules. That's always a mistake. Yeah, this must be a new D. Oh, here we go again. Running clothesline, and again, Farouk gets in the way. Thanks, Farouk. And again, he runs to the top rope. I have never seen Farouk do a move off the top rope in my entire life. But he's climbed up there no less than five times in this match. Get some of my attitude back. Get Farouk out of here. No! Ah. Finally hit that stupid clothesline. And I'm about to pass out. This might be it for Rico. Oh! Jawbreaker. So we're up over no oh, spine buster slam. We're up over nine minutes now. Which um by far the longest match we've had so far. Oh, ooh. Oh, we missed. <laughs> he was supposed to clothesline me off of Farouk's shoulders, but up. Oh, he missed. Did you oversell that move a little bit there, Angle? We're almost at 10 minutes. The longest match I've ever had in this game was actually 26 minutes long. It was not this. It was not the, this particular match in this in a storyline. All right, let's beat up on Farouk. The original plan. Here we go. No. 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 I got all the way to my finisher. They're going to make me waste it. Well, I th thought we were almost done. Ugh. Full Nelson slam from Bradshaw. Oh, now the weapons. No! Whew, that was close. Oh, this clothesline again. Thank you, Farouk. Eh, probably not. No. I'm probably finished. No! Can't keep Angle down. Uh, this might keep Angle down. Ugh. <coughs> yeah, I'm probably done now. Yeah. <sighs> well, that was inevitable. 
Well, it's about time that the hero had some setbacks in this story, to tell you the truth. You can't just have the good guy win all the time. Uh, when we lose, sometimes we lose money. Sometimes we just get zero dollars. We got zero dollars this time. <sighs> so now we've, we've suffered a heartbreaking setback. Uh, what will be next in store? How will this affect our quest for the championship? Um, we'll find out next time. In the meantime, thank you for watching. And uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Leave me some comments. This is the first Let's Play series I've ever done, so... You know, any, any feedback is greatly appreciated. Uh, but thank you, and I'll see you next time.